In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create a procedural blurring effect, and so you can use this to blur any texture in Blender. So here is the node setup, and what you'll do is you'll put the node setup in the vector. So just for an example, I have this wave texture, but you can add this to an image texture, another procedural texture, or really any texture in Blender. So I have a wave texture for an example, and then I'm using the object coordinates, and then here is the custom node group. So you'll just add this procedural blurring here in between the vector, and then I can just take this blur amount and turn it up, and you can see it's gonna blur that texture. And I have the texture coordinate outside the node group because I want customizable control. For example, if you're using the UV coordinates, so if you're using like an image texture and you wanna use the UVs, you can use that. You can also use generated or object coordinates if you're using a procedural texture. So I have a few other examples to show you how you can blur textures. So what I'm gonna do is click on this blur any texture node group and hit control C to copy. Then what I can do is I can click right here on this other image. And so this is from my sci-fi combat robot tutorial. Well, if I hit control V now to paste that node group, I can just drop the node group here in between the vector. So it's going through the generated generated and the vector. And now I can just drag the blur amount and it's gonna blur that texture. I can also do it for a texture here, which has like a bump map and a roughness map and a color map. And so if I wanted to blur all these textures, you can see there's a mapping and texture coordinate. So what I can do is just hit Control V to paste the node group and drop it here right in between the texture coordinate and the mapping. And then I can just change the blur amount. So if it's set to zero, it's not blurred at all. And then as I drag this up, it's gonna be more and more blurred. And the same thing works for a procedural material. So this is is my terrazzo tile material that's a tutorial i also have on my youtube channel so this material comes as a node group so if i hit tab to go into the node group you can see here is the texture coordinate and mapping and i'm using the object coordinates so again i'll just hit Control v to paste that node group and I'll just drop it here in between the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I can just use that blur amount and that's going to blur the procedural texture. So it really works on any texture. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural node group, you can get it with the links in the video description. And you can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. Now I've created another 10 procedural materials. So I've just released Blender procedural material pack 26, which comes with all of these new procedural materials. And all of these procedural materials have been added into my ultimate procedural material pack so any of my existing customers can re-download the product files to get the new updates with all of these new materials. And you can also learn how to create more procedural materials by checking out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So here in a new scene in Blender, I'm just gonna select everything and we're just gonna delete everything. And then I'm just going to add a plane. But you can of course add this to whatever object you want. So let's now click over here to go to the shading workspace. And I'm just gonna add a new material. And I'm just gonna call this blur any texture or procedural blur, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm going to delete the principal shader because I don't actually need it. I'm just going to be adding a texture for an example. So I'm going to be adding a wave texture and let's plug the color up to the surface so I can actually see it. We'll go into the rendered viewport mode and I can just like change the scale and also change the distortion. So now to blur this, what we want to do is search for the texture coordinate node. So add the texture coordinate and I'm just going to drop this right here. And then what I want to do is search for the white noise. So search for the white noise texture. Now, depending on what texture texture you're using, you can use the generated or like the object coordinates or UV coordinates. I'm just going to use the object coordinates because this is a procedural texture. So if I take the color of the white noise texture and plug that into the vector, the vector is going to tell the texture how it's placed on the object. So by putting the white noise into the vector, it's distorting the placement of the wave. And so now it looks really, really noisy and distorted, but that is too blurred. So I want to make it less blurred. So what I'm going to do is search for the mix color node and drop it here. And what I want to do do is drag this down and we're going to put the object coordinates into color A and then we're going to take the white noise texture color and put that into color B. Now in the mix type here I can change this to a linear light and now I can drag the factor so if it's at zero it's not going to be blurred at all and then as I turn it up it's more and more blurred. Now the problem with this is that it's very sensitive and it's kind of hard to control the blurring so I'm going to make it less sensitive so we'll turn the factor to zero. What I'm going to do is search for the math node and we're going to set the math node type to multiply and I can put the value into the factor. So now this top value right here, that is going to control the blurring instead. Now to make it less sensitive, let's take the value here and I'm going to turn this to a 0. 0.0002. So on the bottom value of the multiply on the math node, make it 0. 0.0002. So it's multiplying it by just a teeny tiny little bit of amount and then we'll turn the top value to zero. So this way, now if I drag the value, you can see it's a lot more sensitive. So I have to 
drag my mouse a lot more, whereas before you can see it's blurring way too quickly, but by kind of multiplying this by a really small value, you can see now I can kind of drag my mouse a lot more and it's much less sensitive. So that makes it much easier to control the blurring. So that is it for the procedural effect. It really is that simple. So let's now make it nicer by joining it together into a node group. So I can box select these three nodes here. You can select this one if you want to, but I want this outside the node group so that the user can control what texture coordinate they want to use. So I'm going to box like these three nodes and I'll hit control G to join together into a node group. And then let's hit tab to go outside the node group. And I can just paste here, blur any texture, or you could call it procedural blurring, whatever you want to call it. And let's just drag these together. Now you can see this is a vector, but then this is actually a color. And so it's not really messing up the effect. It still works fine, but I just want to make sure that this is purple. So it's a vector. So no one's confused. So if I hit tab to go into the node group, I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And if you go to the group tab, we can click on this result here and I'm going to take the type here and instead of color, I'm going to change it to vector. And then I can rename these. So this top result here, I'm going to call vector output. And then this bottom one here, this is going to be vector input. So now if I hit the tab key outside the node group, you can see we have the vector input. So you can plug the object or UVs or whatever. And then this one here is called vector output. So let's hit the tab key to go back into the node group. And now I just want to add this value so that I can control it. So I'll put the value into the extra socket here and let's just double click on this to rename it. And I'll rename it to blur amount. So now I can hit the N key to close the side panel and I can hit the tab key to go outside the node group and there is the customizable value. So we have the blur amount, so you can just turn this up and down. And then of course you can use the generated coordinates or the UV or the object coordinates. And this works for any texture. So for an example, I'm gonna add an image texture and let's open a texture. So I've just opened up the sci-fi combat robot render. So I'm gonna put the vector output here into the vector of the image, and then we can put the color into the surface of the material output so I can preview it. So again, you can use like generated coordinates or object coordinates, or if you're using a texture, you might wanna UV unwrap it, so you could use the UV coordinates. And so now I can just blur it, and that's going to blur the texture. So it's a really great effect for blurring any image texture. So that's gonna be it for this video. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching. Watching. And if you'd like to purchase the project files to get this blurring effect, you can get it with the links in the video description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And I've also just released another procedural material pack with all of these 10 new procedural materials. So if you'd like to purchase my next procedural material pack with these new recent materials, I'll have the link to that in the video description. Or if you're one of my customers of my Ultimate Blender procedural material pack, then this comes in the new updates. So you can just re-download all the product files to get the updates with the new materials. And you can also check out my procedural material tutorial playlist to learn how to create more procedural materials. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.